Well, hello and welcome to Hamish's Nerd Network, where Hamish, that's me, Hamish the Polar Bear, hello, uh, talks and chats with some of his nerdy mates about uh, various nerdy things. And today we have uh, with us Leah. Hello, Leah. Hello. And we have Aaron. Hello, Aaron. Hello. And we have John. Hello, John. Hello. There we go. Uh, on today's show, we're chatting about uh, Twin Peaks and a little bit of a video game, I believe, that goes with that. Uh, we're going to be chatting about uh, Riverdale, uh, a show with lots of lovely people in it. Star Wars Rebels. Uh, we're going to have a, a little look forward to Game of Thrones, a quick look forward to that. And our main uh, thing today, since it's just ended, is Doctor Who. Since the last series just ended, we're going to have a, a big chat about that uh, for most of the second half of the show. And maybe a few little bits and pieces, depending on how time goes. Okay, uh, first up, I'm going to hand you over to uh, Leah and John, and a little bit of Aaron later, <laughs> when they talk about Twin Peaks. Uh, so, Leah... Uh, Tell us about Twin Peaks. Uh, give, you know, tell us all about it. I'm probably not the best person to talk to about Twin Peaks. I've only seen the first two series. Um, and I have seen the film. It's basically a big ball of what the fuck. That, that is all I can say about Twin Peaks. <laughs> yeah, I had to admit that I've not actually seen it. Um, I, I'm the only one of us, I think, that's the right age to have seen the original. And unfortunately, I didn't. So. Well, I probably should have as well, but I've watched Fire... I think I watched Fire Walk With Me once a long time ago. Um, generally love a David Lynch, but yeah, yeah, for some reason never quite got into the into the series. It's just something that kind of slipped me by. I can okay. give you a brief rundown. Yeah, but that's that's what we're that's what I'm after. Yeah, just just give me a brief rundown. I think to, just to let the uh, the listener know that we've we actually should have another presenter, but we've had a few problems today, and uh, I think the Twin Peaks was one of his main things. So, uh, but don't worry, everything else we know about. But we'll, we'll we'll let Leah give you a quick rundown. Go for it, Leah. Okay, so this will tie into when we talk about Riverdale later, because Riverdale is kind of based on Twin Peaks a little bit. Um, so Twin Peaks uh, is a town in like Washington or somewhere like that, somewhere gray in America. Um, and there is a murder and then an FBI agent called Dale Cooper goes to Twin Peaks to try and solve the murder. And then there's like a weird supernatural element to it. And he's like, he can like read dreams and stuff and his dreams help him murder is, ba is the basic gist of Twin Peaks, but there's lots of like weird people that live in this town. Like there's a lady with a log and the log tells her things. What, like the captain's log? That tells people things. No, it, it's it's a literal, a literal log. log. Right. And her yeah. name is literally the log lady. Okay, so the the character are just named very, very simply then, are they? Yeah. She is she is just the log lady and she wanders around with a log and tells people things. Well, that's and, good. And there's strange red rooms with a tiny man and people talking backwards. Yeah. And yes, it's full, full of the strange. But recently come back for a new series. How long has it been, The Gap? Oh, that's... Yeah. Sorry, yeah, I was just going to say that um, I, I, did have, I have the information in front of me and it was the... Uh, this is the original was 1990 and 1991. So, yeah, lots of years. Oh, I've not got this... I just realised I have this slideshow playing, sorry, for those that are watching. There we go. I think one of the things that I really liked about the original series, there's a whole sequence um, where uh, Agent Cooper goes through some of his um, theories about what's going on, and he just goes on about this uh, Buddhist stuff, and I find that quite fascinating, the fact that you know, like, uh, normally a detective would would act through solid reasoning, but his, his whole methodology seems to be very uh, odd and off-kilter, you know? Like like Leo was saying, it's, it's almost a bit like, um, what was the Douglas Adams thing? Um, Dirk Gently? Dirk Gently, yeah. It's almost a, a bit like that, perhaps, is the way he was like that. I'm but, not sure um, when Dark Gently was written. Yeah. But as Leah says as well, um, the, the thing with Twin Peaks, a, a big thing, of course, is how many things it has inspired. It yeah. really mm, did. Yeah. Uh, we go into Riverdale um, when we talk about that, but then almost immediately when it was out, there was Wild Palms, 
which oh, was another yeah. one that was very, very kind of similar. Um, and Wayward Pines recently, again, strange uh, pockety village in the middle of nowhere in America and strange stuff are happen and you find out there's more than meets the eye. It's once again the the normal being subverted to paranormal um, and especially with fairly isolated America. Mm. I think that's one of the appeals of it, like uh, the fact that it is every um, almost every american program or every program on tv generally seems to be about um a, a detective in some way and it's like well it this is another show about a detective but and or a police department but it's it's just different and it's strange and that's that's why you know you just the characters in it and the 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 mad sequences just completely Put you on the back foot right so it's, uh, it's essentially a detective story but the um the, the background of it all is just so weird it makes it completely stand by itself yeah yeah pretty much yeah. also a great thing about twin peaks is the style of it so like aaron and john were talking about the red room so like the red room is like this separate dimension that certain characters can go in and out of and it's all sort of very tim burton-esque with like, uh, it's got like a black and white striped floor and it's got like creepy little people that live in there and they all talk backwards and Cooper can go there in his dreams. And then in the new like revival, um, at the end of the sort of main series, something happens to him and he ends up in the red room for quite some time. And uh, in the revival, you see him in there quite a lot. So it's very stylish as well. There's a lot of things about it that just kind of like are very visually nice to look at. Yeah, I mean, I, I gather that was a lot of the things that a lot of the attraction of the original series was, was that people didn't entirely get it all the time, but they, it just yeah. looked amazing. Um, and I think that's. A, I was actually going to ask you: um, Did you say you've seen? Have you seen any of the originals earlier? Yeah, uh, the Chris, who should really be talking about yeah. Olympics because it's kind of <laughs> his thing, lent me the box set. He was like, "You'll like this," ah, and right. uh, I watching it and was like i do but i don't know why <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think that's I what it was like at the time yeah defines the entirety of uh, david lynch's work <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Much. yeah so i mean I, so... I remember when it was i remember when it was on originally and i missed the first episode and people said to me oh if you've missed the first episode you, you know you don't don't bother with it and i'm like well i've i've watched it you know when i was off sick with a cold um beginning of the year and I have to say, I've watched all of it, and I don't understand any of it. Just, <laughs> I thought you were going to come up with some great you know revelation I mean? there, instead of saying, oh, I still no. don't understand it. <laughs> but but what I do like, it's like, it's like you know when a song, when you hear a song, and it's like, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody, it's just gibberish. But it's such entertaining gibberish, so you just let it wash over you. And Fair enough. I think, you know, you, you get involved with the characters and stuff, and... I'm sure it does mean something, but I, I, I don't know what. I just don't know. Well, I suppose, like, most art, it that you can... It can be... Sorry, on you go, Leah. Sorry, I was just saying the song thing is quite a good segue, because we're all radio people. Um, there is a band called Bastille, and their whole first album is based on Twin Peaks. Like, there's a character in Twin Peaks called Laura Palmer. They have a song called Laura Palmer, and, like, their whole first album is, like, it's based around Twin Peaks. Is it a bit oh, strange? Oh, right. Yeah, you're, yeah. yeah. I can. St I never thought of that connection until now. I but didn't. There is a band. I watched Twin Peaks, and then I was like, "Oh my god, this is in the Bastille album." <laughs> right. The other um, I... one I was going to say about um, you know series that have, you know, would never have been without Twin Peaks, um, X Files as well. Um, yeah. Just even from the strange FBI agent and unusual things that are happening, you would never have had X Files. If if you if it hadn't been for for Twin Peaks, yeah, so it certainly had a lot of influence. Right. I would argue. <laughs> uh, what I wanted to ask uh, for those of you who have seen a bit of the new one is how does it compare to the original? Is it does it is it like going back? Is it all this, is it all just you know comfortably fit, or is it some you know are there some changes? Is it a, a, is it a totally different style? Well, not totally different, obviously, but you know is is it jarringly different? I suppose is what I'm asking. Yeah. Not really. It's very similar. Um, and again, I just feel scared and confused, which is what I felt <laughs> when I watched the originals. Right. Because obviously everybody's it's older. Better. It's better, is it? You think it's better? Yeah, definitely. 
What, okay. what, what makes you say that? Overall, I would say, but, you know, there's bits. It's like, you know, it's like comparing one story to another. You know, there's bits of the original that I think are better than the other, the new one and so All forth. Right. But I think overall, I think it's, it's uh, far more emotionally driving, I thought. But um, I don't know. Maybe it's because I had a cold when I was watching the original. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that affects all sorts of things. Um, yeah, okay. So uh, let's say then, uh, for people that haven't seen the original, is it worth looking at the first one, uh, looking at it? Or should you try and get a, a, a view, you know, try and get the box set of the original two series or something, first of all? What do you think, Leah? I don't think the third series will make any sense whatsoever unless you've seen the first two like first two series i don't think fire walk with me is that integral because it's kind of a prequel to the series anyway um but you should start with series three because you've got no chance sorry you should start with series three you shouldn't at all you've got oh, you no chance sorry. of understanding any of it if you start <laughs> right with so if three. you are going to watch it try and get a hold of the, the series one and two but not necessarily the movie then that's not important then oh well the movie just confused me even more to be honest all right. <laughs> what about you, John? What do you think in that respect? Yeah, I could kind of agree with that, but I don't know. It, it, it just, um, I think it's like, you know, with those mad pictures, like, you know, the more you look at it, the more it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, and okay. You look back at it again and then you think, like, do you know what I mean? Um, I'm trying to think of one of those pictures that, that I'm, I mean, but... Um, not like Asher, but something like that. You know, oh, like, right, okay. it's, it's just a big, it's just a big puzzle. It's um, you expect more answers, but you get more, more craziness. You know, <laughs> right? Okay. And uh, uh, Aaron, uh, just your, your opinion on that. And so it seems like people had agreed that you should watch the original first. So what do you think, Bud? Well, this is why I've yet to properly embark in it. I so I didn't see the original series. Mm. As it is. Um, I'm aware of Fire Walk With Me's position as kind of a standalone. Um, in a, it, it, so, yeah, before I even broach Series 3, I, I do think I'm going to have to uh, go back to the originals and kind of work from there okay. at some point. Right, so, yeah, sorry. Of, I... of, uh, of series that you need to watch as always. Yeah, there's always a pile. Uh, sorry, I, I I know you did say that. I'm I'm a great host and I don't pay much much attention. I'm just here to talk a lot. Um, right. Before we move on from Twin Peaks, one last thing is, uh, Aaron, you played the game Thimbleweed Park. Is that right? Yeah. Which which was making me think a lot about the fact that it kind of seems quite concurrent that you know Twin Peaks is back. Um, Thimbleweed Park. If people don't know about it, I've I've recently played my way through this. Um, a computer game out on Steam. Uh, also on Xbox Live, and I think it's coming to the Nintendo Switch soon. Um, it's by the creators of um, Manic Mansion, oh, sorry, Maniac Mansion, and Secret of Monkey Island. All right. uh, and it's, it's a whole throwback to those point-and-click adventure games that you had, say, which, which the Monkey Island series did so wonderfully. Yeah, I was about to ask, uh, but, is that what it is, a point-and-click, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But it's it's not just like, and we moved on. It's an absolute throwback to it. The graphics are still uh, uh, back to that pixely. It's set in 1987, which helps. Um, but it's it's very looks reminiscent that pixel style island. Um, and again, it starts off with two um, spooky age, uh, FBI agents who don't really know each other and aren't all that they seem to be turning up in this suspicious town uh, to investigate a dead body that's been found uh, down <laughs> by the river. Right, so, uh, so very again, similar. You've got Twin Peaksiness, you've got the, the, the two characters look vaguely um, Mulder and Scully ish mm. as well. Um, so you, you've got that from the start. Uh, the city's kind of, sorry, the, the town that they're in is kind of past its best before date. Um, uh, there's, there's a whole thing about a pillow factory slash robotics factory uh, <laughs> that's kind of gone down the pan and there's mysteries as to why and the, the founder of the city who also founded that company has died and his niece turns up for the will reading. Um, and there's also a crazy clown called Ransom 
who insults people and has been put under a gypsy curse. Mm, clones, it's that puts me absolutely off. Absolutely hilarious, really clever, really good fun puzzles. The puzzles aren't quite as difficult, I don't think, as they used to be. But then I don't think anyone would put up with puzzles as difficult as Monkey Island used to be these days. Yeah, I um, think... I think... <laughs> an absolute joy. Really, really, really good. Loved it. Played it, you know, fully intend to go back through it again and again and again. Very, okay, very well. Cool. But I thought Sorry, it was worth move... mentioning while well, we're talking about um, Twin Peaks and, and that sort of thing being around again. Yep, yep. Well, that's great. So Thimbleweed Park is available on Steam. So if you want to have a look at that, and uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll I'm sure we'll hear more about that in the future once uh, other people have played it. Uh, right, I'm babbling. Anyway, moving on. We've got to go on to something else now. Right, well, ah, Steam. Steam. Steam is Steam is the East Seventeen song, isn't it? No, it's a song by. Moving swiftly on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Steam's a song by Peter Gabriel, if you're going to go that way. Uh, right, moving on. <laughs> Next up, uh, another show which, well, it's not actually had an, a, an original TV series as such, but it is very, very much uh, a bit of old uh, material that's been brought right up to date. All. Uh, I don't, I've not seen it yet. I'm just going to change the little uh, thingy on screen so people can see what's going on. Uh, we are talking about now uh, Riverdale. Yes. Yes, and this is Leah's thing, so I'll hand her over to her in just a second. Uh, Riverdale, for anybody that doesn't know, is originally there was a, a comic called Archie Comics, and it's been around for a while. Leah will tell you a lot more detail, I'm sure. Um, and it's connected in the universe to all sorts of other things that you might have heard of, like Josie and the Pussycats. And uh, Leah, help me, the witch. Uh, Sabrina, the teenage witch, that's the other one. <laughs> yep. Um, and... Uh, it's it's one of those things that's out at the moment, so Leah's not. It's going to be sort of a spoiler-free little introduction, just to explain to you the the, the basic story and um, uh, what to expect of it. Uh, if you're watching the video version, you will see lots and lots of beautiful people and in, in, interspersed among the old uh, cartoon graphics. Um, it is full of beautiful people, um, which I don't know if I, I like that or if it just makes me feel bad for not being a beautiful person. But uh, <laughs> Leah, tell us all about Riverdale the show. It is full of beautiful people. That's why I love it so much. Um, so Riverdale, as Hamish was saying, is based on the Archie comics, but the creators of Riverdale are like really big Twin Peaks fans. So like when you watch the opening of the show, you've got like in Twin Peaks, when it opens, you see like the sign that says, welcome to Twin Peaks. And they do exactly, it's exactly the same. And it just says, welcome to Riverdale um, in the, in kind of the opening of, of the show. But also there are characters I say characters, actors from Twin Peaks are also in Riverdale, which is, um, and the premise of Riverdale, much like the premise of the first series of Twin Peaks, is that a very popular teenager has been found dead, wrapped in cellophane on a beach. So that's kind of where the similarities of the two end, because it's essentially based on the Archie comics. But series one is available on Netflix. The entire series is on there. Um, and it's basically a group of high school kids who went to school with the dead kid and they're trying to figure out what happened to him whilst also living their lives and generally being teenagers. Uh, so it's just full of ridiculous, petty high school drama and like mystery stuff. And it's got loads of great 80s actors in it, like uh, Molly Ringwald is in it. It's just mm. a great show. It's mm. hilarious. It's well written. I love it so much. Well, I think that I think we'll say then that's a recommendation from Leah for watching the Riverdale. Uh, yes. Uh, the only the, it's, you it's, say teenagers it's interesting stuff with um, taking the Archie comics source material mm. um, because the Archie comics is, has always been this really all American teen group. Although I've never understood how the Betty and Veronica constant battling over Archie thing is something that was sustainable. But they Which have they done it in the show. Mm. It's, it's, it's one of these things as well that they've really been pushing the boat out with what they can do with Archie comics in the last five, six years. Um, and, in, and enraging a lot of people, which is nice. <laughs> so the comic um, nerds are yeah, up in arms, aren't they? Their introduction of gay characters. Um, yeah. The, the, also, I mean, Jughead being made asexual, which I don't think carried through to Riverdale. Well, um, he's technically in a relationship with 
uh, Betty, and that happens really soon in the series, so that's not like a big spoiler. But uh, he isn't showing any interest in anyone else or anything else apart from Betty. So I guess he could be demisexual in the end. Who knows? Well, uh, so in the comics, it was kind of a, 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 eventually they figured out. It was, I don't think it was ever written in that he was asexual. But someone pointed out kind of later on going, he's never been in a relationship. All he's obsessed with is hamburgers. Yeah, and exactly. Go, oh, OK. Right. Yeah, no, that's a fair point. He's, he's not interested in people that way. He just likes hamburgers and has friends. Yeah. Which in its way is I, kind of interesting, too. Yeah. Can I just ask, um, is Archie Comics, is it in, in much the same way as we would have the Beano? Is it that kind of level of comic or is it? What what age group is Archie Comics left? Is it still going or is it? It's oh yeah, still going. It's young teen. Um, it's not. I, I would say uh, to find a British equivalent. Um, it's it's. Is it like Bunty? Is it aimed at girls? I was or is thinking it at... it's 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 aimed at both, but it's it's not an action comic. It's a it's a, a good wholesome kids look at their funny little quirky adventures type comic like or has been in the past <laughs> kind of but not not wacky and slapstick well that sounds really good from a, a, a it's one of those things where you think why haven't people done that kind of thing before mm -hmm. you know because i heard there's a judge dread tv program in development which would be amazing as well have you, you not know, seen the films characters and things in comics and you, nobody's you know mm. run run off with them you know well, so with with the the interesting thing with Riverdale is they've run off in a completely different direction. Yeah. Um, but say, I mean, it, if anything of the you know cinematic universes and et cetera, et cetera, comics are rife for everything. There's there's going to be so many different things coming um, from the Marvel uh, less uh, main superhero big Avengers brandedness. Um, as, as and again, not even in with the Netflix verse that they've got going on, we've still got Cloak and Dagger and Runaways, which are going to be very teen uh, focused. Cloak and Dagger being two um, kids who run away and end up with mysterious powers after being homeless. And the Runaways based on a comic where teenage kids discover that their parents are supervillains, unbeknownst to them. <laughs> and it's so there, there's some there's some really interesting lesser known comics that are being made into TV series and and should be definitely worth watching out for. Mm, sounds like there's a lot of, a lot of material there to look at. Right, we're going to, have to move on a little bit from Riverdale now. I have not. Uh, I've been uh, neglectful and I haven't arranged a slideshow for this. So sorry to the viewers. I'm going to have to leave you with uh, like a a, a web page or something. But. I believe, again, not one I'm really uh, highly knowledgeable about, uh, we're going to talk about Star Wars Rebels, which I believe is the uh, anim one of the animated series. Um, and I think you're going to hear from John, first of all, on that. Yes. Uh, let me just find my notes a moment. Um, so I did, I completely forgot I was, you know, I, I started to watch the last episode again a little bit earlier to remind myself of... of uh, of what it was like again, because uh, you know, once the series has ended, it's ended months ago. You kind of, you know, it's still in my mind. But I wanted a refresher. Yeah. Uh, but the basic idea of, um, I found my notes now. Uh, Ralph, do you know Ralph McQuarrie, uh, the artist? Oh yeah, he was the guy who did a lot of the concept art for the original Star Wars. Yes, his his work is incredible and pretty much. Um, he started the ball rolling with Star Wars, really, because um, Lucas and, well, there, this guy called Lippincott went round to uh, comic uh, conventions with Ralph McQuarrie's artwork and got kids excited before the film started. So that was the start of it, really, of Star Wars. And if you Google any of Ralph McQuarrie's artwork, it's, it's, it's beautiful, it's really good. And a lot of Star Wars Rebels is based on his artwork, and um, it's it's really it's a it, it is for kids obviously or Star Wars is for kids isn't it? But you know <laughs> it, there's there's a yeah I mean there is there is um, but the thing that I really excited me with the last season is um, 
well, for the most part, they've got uh, the characters that were jettisoned when um, you know Disney took over. They started a whole new canon of Star Wars, and um, so you've got um, the character um, from the Timothy Zahn novel, um, Heir to the Empire. All right, um, what's that? Grand Grand, Ab- Grand Admiral Thrawn. Thrawn, yeah, yeah, I've read, I've read some of those. He's he's like uh, he's amazing because he's he um, he looks at people's. But this isn't a big spoiler. But it's just saying like his tactic for uh, military maneuvering is to uh, look at the artwork of um, of cultures to to actually uh, defeat them. You know, and <laughs> he's quite. A, he's obviously like an upper class, elegant kind of blue skinned, red eyed guy. And he, he, it's just amazing to see him, because I, I read the books, I read the books before, and um, they're good books. Were the books uh, but it's... made before the series then, or or they, are they novelizations of the series? Oh yes, yeah. This, they, the books were came out um, <sighs> after the tr- original trilogy. Uh, oh sorry, you're talking about the Throne books. That's right, yeah. Oh sorry, they've, I misunderstood, since... sorry brought out a Throne book that's part of the canon now, so they've re-brought back in thrown into the canon but uh, there's another character called Mara Jade who Luke um, Uh Luke's wife pretty much from the original uh, books and I don't think that's you know part of it now but uh, yeah no I Uh, will say um, if I could could just jump in for a second I'm just going to say Mara Jade also appears in some of the video games uh, I think in in the uh, the expanded universe but again I think uh, as you say I think that's that's sort of been decanoned now so uh, sorry to carry on but yeah, um, the other brilliant thing um, about Star Wars Rebels is uh, Tom Baker is in it as mm. a, a big uh, character called uh, a Bendu, and um, he's he's sort of a spiritual sort of big hairy thing, uh, <laughs> kind of a Yoda <laughs> car- type of character. Um, but it's just when I first heard his voice, I knew he was coming on. But when I first heard his voice, I'm like, yes. This is good, you know, and it was just good to to have Tom Baker. He's perfect for that character, and he's sort of like uh, the Bendu character is taken. I think it's taken from from George Lucas's original scribbles, and um, he's uh, between uh, good and evil, basically. He sort of seems to be that kind of character. Right, so not specifically a goodie or a baddie, yeah. Uh, just just to give yeah. you some basic information about this, because we're, we're going to have to move on in a few minutes, but before, if I can interrupt you for just a second, John, uh, this is a CGI animation, isn't it? This one, it's not, it's not hand-drawn. That's right, yeah. Right, so yeah. it's a 3D the CGI ever... animation. Uh, of, and I'm, I'm guessing the whole the whole um, aesthetic of it is is very much Star Wars. It's set, is it just before Episode Four? it's set? Is that right, a few years before? Uh, it's, I've made notes of this. It's 14 years after Episode Three, and five years before Star Wars. Right. Okay. And uh, the other yeah. big uh, guest um, voice artist is Forrest Whitaker's in there. Ah, now his well. character was in this before he was in the um, standalone movie. Is that right? After. Yeah. So oh, somebody after, else. After. There was another Star Wars character cartoon before. That originally had uh, the character in, and um, he's that's, that's where the character originally came from. Right. Um, uh, Saul Guerrero, isn't it? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And um, and yeah, he's he's new to uh, Star Wars Rebels, um, uh, but it, yeah, it's, it's it's so good. It's such a good fun. And, it's um, interesting what you say about the the Macquarie artwork stuff because i've watched um various episodes of rebels and the moment you said that suddenly the character of zeb and the way he looks absolutely makes sense yeah because you kind of as you say you look at him and because uh, uh, i've seen the macquarie sketches in the past i never made the connection but the moment you said that i was like oh because zeb almost looks was was he is it chewbacca that kind of obviously look completely different in the Macquarie sketches. Yeah, there is a there is a big is, is, is that the kind of the, the kind of line between them? I think it's kind of 
I think I think the original Chewbacca sketches may have been something like what Zeb turned into. Right. Yeah. A kind of yeah, uh, big big dude, but but you know, hairless and big ears. Kind of almost yeah. swamp monstery. And the other thing that I really enjoy about it is there's there's sort of a lean towards more female characters, mm -hmm. and the, which is good for kids. Um, well, Sabine, sorry. Sabine Wren, um, the uh, the the oh, what's what's the what's Boba Fett's race? <laughs> well, they're not a race; they're Mandalorians. Yeah, the Mandalorian who loves graffiti and that sort of thing. Very cool. What's not to love? Yeah. And also, <laughs> and, the lead character is blind. Yes, absolutely. But not absolutely. not the same one from. Uh, and Hera one, as well. Um, nice to see one of the the tentacle-headed ladies not just dancing around. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not the same blind character as in um, uh, Rogue right. One, no. no. And, and showing my nerd credentials, uh, the, the, the ladies you're talking about, or the, the race you're talking about, are the Twi'lek or Twi'lek. That's the one. <laughs> right. Yeah. The only... The only the one last thing I would say is the only negative thing I would say about it is um, there was... Um, they, put, they seemed to put Darth Maul into it. <laughs> All right. Try, try. He, Why he did I know? Why did I know? Darth, Darth <laughs> Maul and his giant robot spider legs. Oh, is that where that's yes. from? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, let, let, let's let's leave that out yeah, just for now. For now after, we're after venturing we met his into brother, spoiler was territory. Basically, him but yellow. <laughs> oh gosh, Star Wars, such a huge universe, but they've got to keep repeating stuff. Okay. Well, uh, generally, then, I mean. Uh, I, I don't like animation a lot, so that's that's probably why I've never watched any of these things. But for anybody that does like that kind of thing, where can they see it? Is it, uh, is it Netflix or somewhere it's on? Or I um, well, I've got in the Sky, UK anyway. So I've been watching it on that Sky. Oh, so it's on there, is it? Disney XD. Yeah, um, Disney XD yeah. tends to repeat them ad nauseum. Okay, so they've I got their own I channel. I don't know if it's on Netflix or Amazon. I, I don't have them, but um... I don't think so. I have Netflix, and I haven't seen it. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I, I know, don't think it's on Amazon either. Again, so, you know, all things are cyclical, and it will appear on these things. At, yeah, it will come at eventually. Times and be yeah. Removed again. So. Yeah. So, so lots of good information from us there. We're just telling you exactly where to find it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you come I here for the, for the hard information. <laughs> it's on Blu-ray, obviously, and DVD. It's on this and stuff, right? It. Okay. Yeah. Coolio. Right, uh, moving on, because time's against us as always. Uh, we're going to move on now to a bit of uh, this. So I'm just going to play, for the people that are watching, you're about to see uh, a bit of a trailer. Well, no, you're going to see the whole trailer. And uh, for the people that are listening, you're going to hear the trailer. Hope that makes some sort of sense. Uh, here we go. Don't fight in the north or the south. Fight every battle, everywhere. Always. In your mind. centuries our families fought together against their common enemy despite their differences together we need to do the same if we're gonna survive because the enemy is real it's always been real snows fall and the white winds blow the lone wolf dies but the pack survives
Ooh. Who's excited? I'm excited. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. <laughs> <laughs> for anybody that's lived under a rock for a while, that was the trailer, or one of the trailers, for the new Game of Thrones. Uh, now, we obviously don't know anything about it for real, because uh, it's not out yet. Uh, I believe it's later this, this month. And, uh, yeah... I, I'm a big fan. I'm a huge fan. I know there's a lot of controversy about it, but let's not go into that today because this is just the sort of a shorter thing. Um, but if I may, uh, everybody can correct me or add to it or whatever. Um, if I may, I'm going to give a quick rundown for anybody that's sort of vaguely aware of it of what's happened in this coming series. And the idea is, of course, that the the war has come, winter has come, and the White Walkers are now going to move against the living. And uh, as well as that. We have this weird sort of thing where all the people that are uh, fighting for the throne are all coming together onto the mainland of Westeros as well. So, uh, yeah, I think we're going to be getting a lot of battles this series. And I know they've cut down the number of episodes to, I think it's seven. Um, and uh, so hopefully that will mean no filler, all, all you know, all gold. <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll only get the best of stuff. I mean, to be honest, I don't think it's a show that's got a lot of filler anyway. I think it's been quite a good show for that. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to babble. If I, if I don't stop talking, I'm just going to babble. So I'll let everybody else have a little chip in. So, uh, uh, John, are you a fan of, of the, the, the Game of Thrones? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I I started to listen to um, the audio book at work as well. I've seen all the programs. Yeah. Um, but the, the audio book is incredible as well. I haven't got time to read the books, but um, I would do, but, you know. But the, the audio book is lush because there's this guy called, I think his name's Roy de Fries, reads them at all, and he's, he's, does, he's in the Guinness Book of Records for the most amount of character voices. Because I don't know if you've ever tried to read... Oh, this is who does the audiobook, books. right. Okay, so you confused me a bit there. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're kind of specifically... Sorry, if I could, sorry, if I could just interrupt you, keep you on track a little bit. We are going to talk about specifically about Series 7, though, buddy. Just, just a sort of preview of that. Um, does, yeah, but I, I, do, I was just going to make the point, though, is that I wonder if there's anything from the novels that hasn't reached the screens yet, but... That's what I was going to ask you. <laughs> there's a lot that hasn't been on screen yet, yeah. but... Um, because those books are huge um <laughs> but yeah i think as we're going series wise i think it's fairly obvious what the the end goal is going to be yeah i think i think the fact is that all, everything's coming together at the moment <laughs> um and this is this will be the start of it yeah so um yes. has anybody heard any any interesting rumors or got anything interesting that they know even about what's Ed coming Sheeran's up Sheeran's going to be in it <laughs> who sorry Ed Sheeran, Ginger Singer. Oh. Yes. Mm. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Why? <laughs> okay, nobody's got an answer for that. A random scene with um. That's all I know is that he is in a scene with Arya Stark, and it's a bit random. So it's a bit of a cameo thing. Well, than a... yeah, there's there's plenty of of space for gingers in um Game of yeah. Thrones. Oh, I love the gingers. Yeah, you've got well, one of the ladies, personally. So someone pointed out that there was in the I don't think the trailer you've just shown, um, but and one of the HBO ones. There's a scene where there's uh, you know the uh, in the north and Jon Snow is talking to a, a big audience and uh, a, a wrestler called Eric Rowan as someone who's the spit of him and you're going yeah well it's a bald guy with a giant ginger beard. It <laughs> fits a few people, <laughs> okay. but yes, it's, it's a good time to be a ginger. If you're looking for parts in in mainstream drama, well, I, I, I you know, we've, we've we had um, uh, obviously the, the the lead, the the the, the older start girl, uh, Sansa. Sansa. Sansa, thank you. I, I'm, I'm so terrible with the names. Um, well, she she's not really uh, red in real life, red hair, but she does have uh, obviously in the in the show she's got red hair after her mother, after the character her mother has. Um, yeah, I mean, I, th I think basically what we're looking at is is two things. As I say, as I said in the intro, there we, we've got the coming of the 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 army of the undead. They're they're reaching the the, the lands of the living, um, and Daenerys and I... finally turns up. Yay! Yay! Daenerys <laughs> yeah. finally makes her way to Westeros. Yeah, that was the yeah. other I was going to say. Finally, <laughs> all of them are together Daenerys. in the main. And that there is much touching of sand. And uh, <laughs> ransacking of Casterly Rock, or possibly 
Uh, I forget the other port name that the Lannisters have, Lion, some, Lion Port or something. All oh, right. Um, but one of the scenes has them, has the uh, a, a Daenerys army swarming into somewhere with a a um, a sigil that indicates uh, a, possibly the ransacking of Casterly Rock. Mm-hmm. Well, I was going to ask if anybody knows uh, what what uh, d- does Daenerys understand that the, the the undead are coming to rampage over to the land. Does everybody know if that's if she knows about that? I, I don't think so. But... Not being that she's like not been in the country for quite some time. Yeah, I just wanted to. I'm spies assuming were... that's what because the whole uh, sorry, the trailer you played a lot of that seems to be Jon Snow making his case. Mm. And I think that that is going to be to Daenerys. I think it's going to be the allying of those forces um, because there's shots. Um, now, Daenerys is going to her, well, say her ancestral home dragon. I forget the name of. Dragonstone. That's the one. Um, and there's shots of Melisandre standing there. Ooh. Now, of course, she was sent away. And you've so you kind of could have her bringing those two sides together for reasons. For so reasons. that's a potential. Yeah. Plus, you've got the whole Jon Snow's heritage thing. Yeah, well, that yeah. was the big thing at the end of the last series. Obviously, was the uh, the, the sort of uh, I'll say hints because in case just in case anybody's going to catch up, I don't want to spoil it too much. But because uh, it is, uh, I think it's fairly clear, but. Uh, it takes a little bit, a little bit of thinking and reading into to to get the the full story. But I mean, it's mm-hmm. yeah. Hopefully, we'll get the other half of that story as well. Yeah. Uh, so, so John, did you say you say you've listened to the books? Have you the the uh, audio books? Does that bring you up to where we are on the series, or is it all sort of the series is ahead of the books now? Oh, it has ahead. Yeah, right. I I didn't. I I um, got as far as um, John Snow and that uh, uh, young woman who was a wildling. Oh, right. And that's as far as I got in the audiobooks. Ah, so that's a bit further back they, then, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what season that is. But it's it's all like, yeah, it's all different, isn't it? The timeline's all different and, and all sorts in the books. It's, but then they put several characters into one and stuff like that. And they've aged up quite a few characters because obviously there's a bit of a dodginess going on there. There's things like that going on. You know. Well, also because, and and people get very precious about when something's been, you know, started off as a novel or as a comic or thing. Things when you're translating something into a different media, you have to make changes. Yeah. Stuff doesn't translate. If you're creating something for one media, then you're creating it with that focus, and. If you just slap it into another media, it doesn't quite always work. Mm, I, um, think I, I think that's I why say, the Lord of the Rings. Chris, well, were, I was going to say Chris, Chris so isn't here. I don't want to go too much into American Gods, um, but one of my because we were going to discuss that, but we'll we'll leave that for another time. But one of my biggest criticisms of American Gods is I think they've possibly struck to, a little bit closely to the source material, which means that you don't really know the name of any characters a lot of the time because no one's mentioning their name because in a, in the book they would be going and this character did this and this character did that. And if you're not referring to them by name, you don't really pick up on it. Right. So there's and, no and, audience surrogate there then. Yeah. yeah there's, it's kind of, you have to almost read around it in order to establish these things. Um, it's one of the reasons why, as well, people like Alan Moore won't get involved with the movie translations of his comics, because of the fact that he wrote it for a medium, and therefore, fine, you're making something that's completely different. It's not what that was intended for, and so wants no part of it. Okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, it, 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 it's it's why you know you can't. I, I, in my opinion, people can get too nitpicky about changes that get made. Yeah, some people are really into it, but that's that's just the way it is. I mean, like I was saying, maybe maybe that sort of thing. Um, you know, you you can do almost anything in writing. <laughs> you don't need to worry about how how it's going to be performed in a in a, in a movie or a TV show. And that's what I'm saying. That's why Lord of the Rings took such a long time to become a live action film. It's, you know, it just took such a long time for technology to to get there. Really, um, yeah. 
I think there's... I do love the um, I love the audio books of um, the BBC audio books of Lord of the Rings, and I think those are really nice. Um, I don't know. People seem to like TV and film more than radio adaptions, but there's a, there's a lot of rich material out there of, of adaptions in that sense. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, just very briefly before we move on, I'll just on on that subject. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy has, 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 has that's got a completely different life of its own, uh, a completely different life to itself in radio format or audiobook format than it does in the books, that it does in the TV show, does it does in the, the the movie. You know, it's it's uh, it's one of those things they've really gone all over the place with. Anyway, uh, I'm, so, I'm uh, yeah, but it's not the most popular one, but the Stephen Fry audiobook of. Uh... Hitchcock's Guide is particularly lovely. I have not given that a go. I don't really do audio books myself. I tend to read the actual books or watch, you know, TV or film. Anyway, um, yeah. So Game of Thrones is out in the next. Yeah, Game mm, of Thrones. That's what we were talking about. Yeah, I'm trying to keep us on track. Yeah, <laughs> uh, is out next week. I think it is, or later this week. I believe. What is it? This sixteenth, isn't it? It's out. So that. Oh, it's a week today. Go. Hold on. Sixteenth, yeah, yeah, I've got it now. Well, that, I'm assuming it's on the same. Is it released the same day in, in America as it is in Britain, or vice versa? I hope so. It's out July sixteenth in America, so I'm hoping that it will just be like later in the same day. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, that's usually what happens with those things, or or you know, another day. Point is, it will be out. We're we're hoping to do this little thing fortnightly, so hopefully we'll have a full episode uh, under our belt. In time for the next ep- in time for the next episode of uh, Hamish's Nerd Network, and we can talk about that. But yeah, uh, I think it's fair to say we're all pretty much. And I'm, I'm a huge fan. I really love it. It took me a while to get into it. I've not. I have to admit, I've not read the books, but it took me a long time to get around to it because it's one of those things people say, "Oh, it's great. You've got to see this," and that, that often that puts me off because it messes with your expectations. But I just started watching it. I think it was around about series three, and uh, so I started watching it in, in you know in bulk. Uh, from the very start uh, and caught up to uh, by the time it was like series four was coming out I think it was um, and yeah I, I'm a huge fan I'm I'm really hooked to it um, you know yeah so, I I'd say I saw, I'm, um, I'm similar with you say, oh sorry uh, John you, after you <laughs> oh sorry mate um, I was just going to say Stuart Lee's I saw Stuart Lee the comedian do stand up and his opinion on Game of Friends was hilarious. He didn't like it. <laughs> all right, okay. All, all these young people coming up to him saying like, "Oh, you gotta watch Game of Thrones, mate." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know what you mean well, that, that's what, that's what you know puts me off a lot of things before. It takes me a long time to get around to anything. But two reasons. One is that that I, you know I don't like my my expectations to be sort of interfered with by other people. Um, but also, I like to watch things in bulk. I, I, I'm not one of these people. That, you know, I stopped watching episodic television. Back in the you know nineties, uh, I've I've just always since then uh, watched things on the internet when they're all available in big chunks, or watch DVD box sets. You know, I'd, I tend to go through little phases of just suddenly watching ever watching something, and that and that's what I'll do is I'll sit down and watch a whole series of more than one. Anyway, uh, moving on just for time. Uh, yeah, fair to say we're all pretty <laughs> excited about that, and uh, hopefully we'll have something to talk about in the next episode from that. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah. Anybody else got want anything to add before we move on? Game of Thrones. Uh, the only thing I was going to say is I agree with you about being a late starter to Game of Thrones. Um, and but that was partly I think I misread it as being Lord of Ring, Lord of the Rings meets Spartacus Blood and Sand, and that put me off quite badly. <laughs> um, but glad I eventually picked up on the, there was more to it than that. Yeah, yeah. Game uh, of the Thrones. Game of the Thrones. Mm. <laughs> okay, on that strange note... The Lord we'll... of Rings. Lord of Rings. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> uh, right, uh, I've got a, a new slideshow for you lovely people that are watching because I've remembered this one. Uh, oh, you have? Oh, yes, they, they've also been watching the Game of Thrones slideshow for uh, anybody that doesn't realise. Uh, now, the recent series of Doctor Who has ended. Um... We will talk about that pretty much till the end of the show now, I think, because we're running over a little bit, so we're not going to get the little bits and pieces in. We can save them for next time. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to just pull up a few notes, because thankfully, uh, very helpfully, Mr. Aaron there made uh, a little note thing. Can I find it? 
Can yeah, I, I find got it? obsessive at one point. And, I didn't want um, to say that, but you've got you've got a little. <laughs> yeah, it's just a. I know. To be fair, it's just a bullet point list of of the things. Now, I've I've also got the um, the uh, the wiki of you know the just the, the episode synopsis and things in front of me as well, so I can check it all out because I'm terrible with the names of things. I'm absolutely awful with that. So Doctor Who, um, I, th- I think it's fair to say most nerdy people like Doctor Who. It's one of those shows that it sort of taken over the whole world even though it's very very British um, they have sort of uh, I don't want to say it, uh, transatlanticized uh, I'd rather more um, co- made it more cosmopolitan shall we say I think it's a better way of putting it uh, over the last few years with the, with the remake or not remake the reboot the resurgent series whatever you want to call it um, but it is a very British show and I'm always sort of pleasantly surprised when people you know get it and uh, sometimes there's things that they, they do go, what the hell is that? You know, and it's like to us, it's just a normal everyday bit of thing. You know, not that a police box was, but the time I was uh, born anyway. So that's another thing. That, that's that's a, a weird thing that sticks out. So let's try it and in the next uh, 35 to 40 minutes, squeeze in, uh, chat about the last series. Uh, well, the, the previous series, shall we say? There's mostly the last series. There's more to come. Uh, this was Peter Capaldi's third series as uh, the main character, the Doctor. And we knew early on, uh, I don't know if we knew before the series started, but I think we did, we knew early on that he was not coming back, uh, so we know he's going to uh, regenerate into someone else in the Christmas special. And no! I know, I know, no. I, I think it's great. Um, I, I, just for time, I don't want to buy, um, harp on it too much because I want us to run through all the episodes at least a little bit. But I, I do think that, like, we had a bit of a chat about this before, is that... Um, I think he was kind of wasted, you know, his potential was wasted in some of these, but I do think personally this series has been a a better one for him, for you know, as as an actor. And uh, the other thing that's been introduced in this series, so it's third series of uh, Peter Capaldi, and it's the first series, um, spoilers ahead by the way, we're assuming that you're a big Doctor Who fan if you're going to listen to this bit, so give you a few seconds to cover your ears and run away if you you want. Uh, We are, uh, we were introduced to a new uh, companion, Bill, Bill Potts, uh, in the very first episode of this series, and uh, unfortunately, we found out she's gone as well. Uh, I'm going to cry because I really did like her. I think she's been one of the best companions for a long time. But let's talk about that as we go through and see how mm. it goes. So we'll start off uh, talking about the pilot. Uh, I'll let somebody else babble because I've pretty much said the the, the vague, the, the, you know, the main parts of what I liked about the uh, that. Uh, uh, let's go with John. To start us off. Talk, talk to us about your opinions of the pilot episode. Uh, the, not the pilot episode. The episode called the pilot episode one. <laughs> what? Um, <coughs> I really enjoyed the uh, opening episode. Um, yeah, it was good. I think um, I'm not quite. I don't want to sound thick, but I've, I've obviously watched it a couple of times, and but I'm not really sure what the motivation was. Um, for the sentient puddle, and we never saw the nemesis, the people behind the puddle. We never saw who they were and what they were doing. Yeah, I just feel there's part of it. This, I, 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 do, I, I really enjoyed it, but I just feel that there's part of it that's not explained. I think it was almost uh, as if it was just there for Bill's side story part. It wasn't. Yeah, really... but a very kind of. And now it's here, and well, you're, nothing will be spoken of about this <laughs> for quite some time. Side story part. It never really works with her motivation that she meets this girl, has a date, and becomes so obsessed that she must always now go with the doctor to maybe search her down. It, it never quite kind of, yeah, got a bit of vagueness. Yeah, I'm just wondering what, her, episode, uh, what order the they writing. actually. Sh- shot the stuff compared to which order we saw it in because I think there's mm. some some bits but certainly Peter Capaldi's hair changes quite a lot uh, from episode to episode and um, yeah, the the new status quo of him um, being a university lecturer in Bristol seemingly mm. um, and and you know the mystery of what was below um, it, it was interesting to have him have a center you know to, to not just and here's a new companion and they're wandering off and stuff you did have somewhere he could return to it, more than just the TARDIS. Yeah, well, it felt a bit um, like um, the Third Doctor in that respect, didn't it? The early early series of the Third hmm. Doctor where he was, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He was cast out to Earth anyway. He was uh, ex- exiled to Earth. Yeah. Hmm. 
Leo. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting aspect, and they play with it a little bit, but yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love that idea personally. I think it was um, a good a, a good thing to come back to. I mean, if they'd, I mean, Stephen Moffat, I didn't know he he was doing this series, so he suddenly had to write it because the BBC were just going to sit around and wait till, for Chris Chibnall to take over. And, you know, we weren't even going to get this series, so glad we have, really. Absolutely. You know I mean? Yeah, no, I, th- I thought that had been weird, because I didn't follow some of what had happened. And I got confused, because I thought that Moffat had already gone, and it was only partway through the series I realised, no, this is still him. Um, because it was kind of that, oh, well, the new writer's going to start, but then they'll start, but they'll they'll have... and and. Um, Capaldi will go, oh no, Capaldi will do one more series. And it's, it, yeah, it did get confused as to where the steering was and what was going on in the background. Yeah, but hopefully that will is... be resolved with the new, you know, the new changeover. Mm. But we'll, we'll come to that at the end, if we may. Um, I just want to get Leah, because we've, 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 we've all drowned Leah out for a minute or two. Can we, uh, Leah, what did you think <laughs> of the introduction? Please, please tell us. As our, as our, um, our Sorry, nominal... Our resident female. Female, yeah. Tell us what you thought about companion. this, particularly the companion. Um, yes. I actually, I had kind of hated the everything that Stephen Moffat's done, to be honest. I really don't rate him as a writer at all and I was really looking forward to Chris Chibnall doing this series and then the pilot happened um and I was like oh my god this is a good episode (laughs) and it actually I felt like it gave Peter Capaldi a lot more to work with and I really liked the way they introduced Bill I thought that was really good and actually I really liked all of Bill's storylines but I do agree with the rest of you that it kind of it was a bit of a nothing episode in the end because we had no idea what the puddle thing was for until the very end of the series, and it kind of would have made much more sense if that had been resolved. Yeah, if they sort of visited it a little bit in the episode to let us sort of know what was going on. Yeah, it was a bit strange. Yeah. One one thing I will say, I th- um, this I remember say, talking to a few people about the uh, the part where uh, again spoilers alert, but this this is you know this is a review of the series, not a not a, not a preview. Um, the part where you see the face in the puddle is very old, old school Doctor Who. I thought that was brilliant. That really hit something in my, you know, in my, in my it hit the inner child of me because <laughs> I remember hiding behind the sofa. Yeah, that's like the Zygons, something. isn't it? Yeah, there's all sorts of things that just yeah that, that, that went by, and there's a few things in this this whole series actually like that. There was quite a lot of nostalgia. Uh, for the show itself, so yeah, that that was a good episode and scare factor because of that kind of old school Doctor Who trapping a face into a, a, an, an inanimate sort of place. Oh yeah, yeah, Oof, it got to me. Yeah, uh, yeah right. We, just to say get as well, just on that first episode, you do kind of have this bookendness. Yeah, the the middling the episodes between there is some you know interlocking and all that sort of stuff, but there's definite kind of the 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 two the start first and the last episodes bookend so much in oh, as yeah, much yeah. with like Bill being introduced and being gay that's only really properly referred back to in the last episode mm. with the kind of line about oh you know how I'm only into girls of my age I'm glad you know that there's a little yeah, bit in the uh, the one with the, uh, the is it the Eaters of Light the one with the Romans yeah I yeah. liked that episode that was really yeah. good sorry I'm oh. jumping ahead though let's let's uh, sorry finish your point there I'm sorry <laughs> No, 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 I was just saying, and then you had, uh, yeah, we've, as, as we've touched a little bit, um, Water Girl turns back and is, is the new Deus Ex Machina, um, yeah. which is uh, it's my, my least favourite thing about Doctor Who. And then Thing turns up and all is fine. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I, did, I, I liked the series as a whole, but there was some definite, you could tell there was some rushed writing in as much as, Right, this is where it starts, this is where it ends, and I'm going to do some stuff in the middle. Mm. Yeah. I think that the uh, the thing about the pilot is, is it, it, was a, it was quite satisfying if you didn't think too much about the story because it was so good for characters. It was introducing mm. or, or reintroducing the characters. There was obviously the other thing I forgot to mention. Um, while the Doctor's in his own office, there's, there's those little things where... Um, I mean, it's, it's quite subtle, but you see all the little things on his desk that remind him of his past, but there's a few things missing because obviously um, he had his memory wiped of um, 
gosh, I'm going to say it now, I forgot her name as well, <laughs> Clara, that's it, uh, you know, so they play her music, but you don't see her, anything about her there, because obviously he doesn't remember, so there's a lot, there's lots of little strange, but interesting things in it, but uh, as you say, I think as a story, it, it was a, it was a little bit of a letdown, but it was just so good as an episode for introducing the, these characters, I think it was really good, um, yeah, and, and as you said, I'll uh, say one thing that really, I think, is a bit of a mistake for the whole series that happened at the end of the first episode, is they had all these um, different pictures of what's coming up later on, and the, the obvious the spoiler of, of oh, John yeah. Sim coming back was right yeah. the first episode. Yeah, that was and quite then, a bad thing. Yeah. I, I was going to get into that as well, because um, the the uh, World Enough and Time episode that you said with John Sim, but the Cybermen too. And that whole episode is ruined by that coming this season. And, and yeah, the they took time, away. So. Yeah, they took away the sort of build up to them becoming from one thing to into being Cybermen. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a shame. Yeah. Well, we'll yeah, get the, to the, that. The moment you see them with the clock face things, you just like, oh, oh yeah. there's Cybermen. Yeah, you got it then. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a shame. It's, it seems to be a very American thing that they've got to sort of teaser it and show you half the episode. And because I used to get that with um, Battlestar Galactica as well. I used to watch that, um, the, the remake, uh, the, the sort of new version of that. And they do mm. that at the end, you'd see something, and I'd just like, oh, sorry, no, no, it's even worse. They did it at the beginning of the episode. So you'd have a cold open, and then while the titles were running, they would show you little bits from the episode. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. They were careful not to show you the the really important part so that the twists would be maintained. No, to some extent. With, but... with, with, that, with that episode... So many really major parts. Again, John Sim, you're looking for him. And the moment that that character yeah. speaks to Missy, you go, oh, I know who you are then. Exactly. Yeah, and it's a bit again, the, yeah. the Cybermen are completely... The, it's, it's a, you get the moment where he goes, oh, this is a ship from Mondas. And you go, yeah, about <laughs> yeah, 20 we, minutes yeah, ago. We, we, we knew we, that for a while. Yeah. In Cybermen. It's fine. <laughs> we're, we're, we're well ahead of you. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, let's move on to... Because... <laughs> Sorry, let's move on. We'll come back to that because we will get to that episode and we can talk about it again then. But episode two was Smile, um, and it was uh, it was okay. Is <laughs> that the robots? That's the robot, yes. yeah. There was two it different was, types. can upset robots. Yeah, two different yeah. types of robots. Uh, one was the sort of larger ones that communicated with, with emojis on their face or screen or whatever you want to call it. And there was also these little um, nanobot Nanobots. things that flew around and, and did stuff. Um yeah, yeah we, we've had we've had don't blink we've had don't breathe now we've <laughs> had don't get upset yeah am i am i missing any other don't monsters <laughs> uh i don't think don't so. go to the toilet oh don't gosh go to the loo. <laughs> don't go to the loo. oh god i don't want to see that episode. Uh, no i don't want to see that episode either no no thanks <laughs> yeah so it was um maybe they've done that with the savine haven't they <laughs> <laughs> i suppose yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay. That woman got attacked in the toilet, didn't she? Did indeed. Yeah. Right. Okay. Let's move on from the toilet, <laughs> so to speak. Uh. Okay. Oh, and uh, well, yeah. The, the thing about that one. Um. Now this, the end of Smile. It's just. Uh, sorry. Has anybody got anything they want to say about the episode? Because I don't think it was a very big episode to talk about. Has anybody got anything particular? It disappointed me. After the pilot, I thought like, oh, Capaldi is on form, it's fun, and then we had the, the bloody emoji robots, and I was just like, oh, really? Yeah, I didn't really? like it. I think we'd already had that with the, 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 the you know, those uh, robot priest things with the faces that rotated. It was very yeah. similar to a lot of things. It was very, you know, it's been done. Okay, anyway, before we move I on... I quite liked it, because I, I thought it sort of dealt with the idea of grief quite well yeah, because the message of it was good it was just the monster was yeah. a bit like... yeah 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 they, 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 they fitted in with bill's character as well for that very reason didn't it yeah the, the point the of the thing. story was good but yeah. like you said the message of it was good uh something that the, um... oh sorry just the, the the execution i think is the, the word yeah um moving I on uh... the hand bots are a lot scarier uh I can't remember what that is, but we'll come back to that. Really got to move time-wise. I'm going to try and get the whole series in. Okay. Uh, the one thing I was going to say about the, the end of Smile, that episode, uh, it did that really cool old-school Doctor Who thing. Again, a lot of callbacks in this series to the original series. It ended this episode with the very little, you know, a, a tiny little start of the next episode. So even though the stories were separated uh, in the old episode, they, they still did a, um, a sort of, 
I don't know if you call it a cliffhanger ending or whatever, but a um, kind of handover, a handover, yeah, yeah, which which they always used to do. So even when a story completely finished in the original series, they still did that uh, most of the time, not all the time, depending on sort of politics of the show and whether it was definitely going to be on or not. But it was a thing that was very, very, very much a, a standard thing for a long time. Um, and at the end of this episode, they come back uh, to London and the River Thames is frozen and there's an elephant <laughs> walking towards them, which takes us on to the third episode. Uh, they've arrived in London in 1814. Is that 1814? 1850? 18, yeah, round about then. Uh, and, uh, yeah, this, this this is the sort of Oliver Twist part of it. <laughs> it's part of that episode, I would say, you know, so with the, the, the urchins and stuff. But also, of course, there's the typical thing. There's there's aliens involved, or at least strange robots. Uh, and uh, well, it's the first pure historical in the new series for a long time. Well, first pure historical since it's come back. Yeah, but it's not speci- it's not specifically set in any real historical thing, is it? Well, it's set during Victorian times because the oh, yes. Thames used to freeze over, and they would have fairs on it. Oh, so that part, well, okay, from, so from that point of view, that's pretty good. Oh, see, there, there you go, that's me being ignorant of that. Um, it used to get well cold in England back oh, then. Well the, cold. Like, they literally would have fairs on all the rivers. So, like, the Thames, they'd it would freeze over and they'd have, like, fairs under, like, Cutney Bridge and stuff. Oh, right. Well, there you go. Yeah, well, they've already, they already referenced this before because they said Stevie Wonder played there with the Matt Smith Doctor. Yeah. All oh, right, the joke being that he wouldn't realise he was time travelling. Right, okay, um, right. I mean, is, thing, is there anything um, to say about that episode? Because I don't have much. What was story. interesting with this, we say about you know the throwbacks um, to pe- previous series um, and previous kind of yeah, obviously classic Doctor. I think I was just thinking about Smile actually as well. Uh, I can group in with this and with Oxygen that it kind there's a kind of throwback to the Sylvester McCoy days of putting in political commentary. Yeah, okay, yeah, re- re- relatively heavy-handed political commentary into Doctor That's Who. Just a racist. Yeah, absolutely. Nathan um, Barney. You had, um, you say, with, with Smile, you had there was a whole immigration metaphor yeah. being inter- interjected into current politics. Um, you know, uh, Thin Ice was very much talks about socialism and capitalism and that kind of thing. Um, and the you know disposable and health and safety in the workplace, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and then leading on again, oxygen, which we'll get onto. But again, it's oh. that the, you know workers' rights, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's and all also, things that are very, uh, very. When uh, they get into that house as well, it's also like a social housing situation where you've got a house of multiple occupancy with a very dodgy landlord. Yeah, <laughs> so absolutely. Again, it's like housing crisis. Yeah, fair play. There's yeah, a lot of a lot of stuff that was trying to keep it topical, and also, you know, as, as I would say as well with the BBC that's kind of having accusations of bias and of changing from being a public broadcaster to being a state broadcaster. Um, that yeah, you know, the last time that sort of thing was being suggested was back in Thatcher times, which again was why rebellion with Sylvester, the Sylvester McCoy Doctor kind of happened with a lot of the writing that was done with him. Yeah, I think I'd agree with that, yeah. It's just, it's, uh, that brings us on to something I'll very briefly mention before we move on to the rest of the series, is the uh, the Scottish Mafia in Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've got our third Scottish actor playing Doctor Who, uh, playing the Doctor, Doctor Who, God, let's not go out of there yet, um, in uh, Pierre That's Capaldi. his name now. Yeah, <laughs> we'll oh, get to that. We'll get that. to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've got a third actor, and obviously we've got uh, the, the showrunner at the moment is a Scottish chap, and uh, the master at the moment is is sort of Missy at the moment is Scottish as well. So it's it's gone really Scottish, which I like in some ways, but it's got a bit sort of over the top. I think it's not, I could see people, you know, I mean you you're all English, so you can tell me, does it seem a bit much? <laughs> I mean, it's you know you. you 
you know, one Scottish person. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Scottish indoctr indoctrinated. Yeah, now. you you live um, there. So now, I'm yeah. I'm quite happy with the concept that the best doctors are Scottish. Oh, no, 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 I, I literally don't have an opinion on a Scot on anyone's nationality, whether <laughs> it's just whether or not they're a good doctor. Yeah. Found he's a great doctor when he's given good things to work with. Indeed, this is also indeed. true. But you know, it doesn't really matter whether or not he's Scottish, Scottish, Scottish best. Welsh, Jamaican. <laughs> like whether or not he's a good doctor is what matters. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, yeah, or that's or male or female doctor. or whatever. Exactly. Oh, is we'll he human? Is he alien? Who cares? Can he do the job? <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> okay, right. I'll move on from that. It was just a brief mention, just because, you know, you mentioned Sylvester McCoy and that port popped it into my head because Sylvester McCoy was the first Scottish doctor. And then David Tennant, who didn't use his accent, and then uh, obviously back to, to Peter Capaldi. Right. Okay. You've kind of summed up, really, some of the other bits. Uh, no, I'm just trying to think which is it episode. Is it Thin Ice, the one we were just talking about, where the Doctor yeah. actually hits somebody? Yeah, he punched yeah, a they... racist, and I was like, "Yes." Mm. Played by Nathan. You seen Nathan Barley? Yes, yeah. of course, yeah. played by Nathan that, Barley. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's an amazing program. Mm. So um, he's, uh, yeah, no, he's not. It's not very often that he's seen to be directly violent. The Doctor. Um, it's not unknown, uh, even in the new series, but it's certainly. Uh, Certainly seen him be directly physical, vi physically violent, but that was quite weird for me. Uh, again, harking back to the third Doctor. The third Doctor did his, uh, what was it, Venetian Aikido or Judo or some strange, <laughs> whatever they called it at the time. Uh, so that, but that again, was... it's keeping very topical, very newsworthy, punching a Nazi. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Uh, that was what that was the nice uh no the the episode as you say but i think oxygen the, the fifth episode sort of fits in with all that i went again but the fourth episode was kind of a, a it was almost a jarring out of place one um didn't really fit in with those and it's knock knock where the uh five students bill and four of her friends are, are trying to find a you know student accommodation and of course, being Doctor Who, they find student accommodation with some weird mystery involved in it. Um, I quite liked this episode. Um, it had David really Sushi in it. As, as, is that David Sushi? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, he was the, he played the landlord of the, the, the strange landlord. And he was brilliant. Um, I, I think we could have done more with him. I, mm, I didn't think he was. I, I love David Sushi. Right. And I thought, I thought he was used really poorly. Well, I thought they I didn't thought use enough really of them. Episode. Oh right, okay. I, I, I thought I thought the general story was kind of yeah, all right, but his kind of thing where he was arrested development child, old man thing. Towards the end there, yeah, yeah, okay. It, it, it. I, I thought his his kind of his story within the episode just felt weird and weak, and and again the the whole thing where. Um, his mother di didn't have authority until she realised she was his mother, at which point it's silly for boy, get away. It, uh, it did move very quickly really... towards the end. I'll give it that. Yeah. yeah. And then it you know, me... everyone's fine at the end. It doesn't yeah. make any sense whatsoever. I'm, the... I, like, I'm not... Right, as a student, if one of my lecturers turned up in my student accommodation and just hung out there... <laughs> I'd be like, "What are you doing here? Go home." Well, that's 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 what happened. To be fair, they were. All, she was saying to him, "Turning you know, up, like, we were just fine with it. It made no sense." And then there was that awful bit at the end where the whole moral of the story was: if you never go outside, you're a lame person. And it's just like, no, mm, yeah. there are people that watch this yeah. show that physically cannot go outside. Don't tell them their lives aren't worth living. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think that, I, that's the the end of it. I did I did object to a lot. Yeah, there was a lot of that sort yeah, of. Yeah, I think Chris made that point as well, and yeah, it's, did, yeah, it's definitely a, a, a something that's not thought through. And normally, Doctor Who can be very sensitive with with issues like that, and it's yeah, yeah. it was a bit of a, a slip up yeah. on their part. Yeah, it wasn't. I did wasn't like. The, Sorry. It wasn't the gem of the series. No, no, it really wasn't. I just feel like a lot of people who would watch Doctor Who watch it for escapism, and if they are someone who, for whatever reason, finds it difficult to leave their house, being 
given that as a message, must make them feel really a bit shit about themselves. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't great that. But the one thing, the thing I was going to say that I liked about it, though, <laughs> I did like David Sushi <laughs> yeah. up up to the up until the, the yeah towards the end. No, I didn't. Obviously, that sort of fell apart. It fell apart. But I liked the creepiness of him uh, as while well, he was still mysterious. But the thing I liked about the episode was the actual well, not the monsters, but what what they did. You know how they were transforming people into these wooden things. And I quite like that because I like that. That's kind of again old school Doctor Who, where something weird happens um, to you. I tell you, the best, the most incredible thing about it, I thought, was the sound. If you list, if you watched it on the iPlayer with headphones on, it's a binaural sound mix. Oh it's yeah, I, 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 mm. I. Oh yeah, the knocking itself set, was all meant to be strange, wasn't it? Yeah. Sounds incredible. The way you can hear things, you know, where your where your where your nose is, you can hear sound around there. It's it's incredible piece of work, and um, congratulations! You managed to get your craftwork box set into the proceedings. Yeah, well, it's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving no, on. No, no, you're, you're absolutely right. The binaural sound thing. I, um, I didn't know. I watched it with speakers. So. It's it's I say really clever cinema sound. Um, you know, completely surrounded and with, but through headphones. Yeah. The the simulated. Um, cinema sound is absolutely worth checking out. I tell you what, the the other thing I would say that I liked about it was the the inclusion of her friends and all the pop culture references and things like that. You know, I love all that stuff, and I kind of really wish they had more of that in the. You know, this one one aspect of the Russell T Davies era I liked a lot was how he had pop culture references, and I don't think. I love Stephen Moffat's stuff, but I, I I think that's one thing that was I could do with more with you know. Yeah, you do you do have to be careful though, because some things are just lost in time, you know, <laughs> lost in time. Okay, uh, yeah, got got to move us on. Yeah, just totally just, yeah. just you know, a shame that after spending this long trying to get David Suchet, that that's the episode they gave him. Yeah. And you feel he they was could have been brilliant, though. Yeah, up, up to the point. <laughs> yeah, up to well, the he point. He is of the brilliant, end, but he did what he could with the thing he was given. With what he was given. Yeah. <laughs> okay, moving on because try and get uh, the rest of the series in. Uh, Oxygen, we've basically mentioned. Um, yeah. Uh, no. The, I love Oxygen. I'm just thinking about I, something. I absolutely uh, love this one. It was fantastic. It was like capitalism in space. Mm. Um, well, the jokes about the doors. Um, and Verma, Velma, sorry, isn't it? And um, the Satnev, Satnev uh, having a new road and things like that. It was, it was just brilliant. I just really loved the tension in it, the actual jeopardy, and um, and again the, the the meanings behind it was it was it, I thought it was really cleverly done. I thought it was uh, it was a, a worthwhile episode, and yet still maintained some comedy and. Yeah, no, I, I, I have no problems with it. Don't have a lot yeah, to say about Lucas. it, but I don't have any problems with it. <laughs> oh, I loved it. I think it was it's one of my favourite episodes by far. And like when the bit when Matt Lucas um, breathes on the uh, breathes inside his space, space helmet and wipes the outside of it, <laughs> I, I just I just totally creased with that. Uh, I do, I will say before the series started, I wasn't really sure about Matt Lucas and Nardo, uh, but that, it turned out to be a really good character and it fitted in well. It wasn't, he wasn't, I mean, he was the comic relief, but he wasn't, you know, shoehorned in. It fitted in quite well because um, he had the yeah, sort of conscience as a doctor, the Jiminy Cricket the thing. Season. Yeah, he was good. Um, just going to say that's the episode, just briefly mentioned that's the episode where the doctor becomes blind um, yeah. and tries to hide it from Bill for quite some time afterwards. <laughs> Uh, right, so let's move on. We've got uh, two, it's a two-parter next, isn't it? The, uh, or is it three-parter? Three-parter. Three-parter, three of course it is, yeah. So we've got Extremis, or Extremis, The Pyramid at the End of the World, and The Lie of the Land. Now, we're not going to have much time to talk about this before we go tonight. Um, but uh, it's a sort of big, old-school... I keep saying old-school. I've really got to think of another one. It's a big, old, uh, classic Doctor Who, you know, Invasion of Earth-type uh, serial um, Can I just say one point about extremists? Go for it. Um, the thing, the thing that I, two things really. The, the thing that I really liked about it is the idea of a character, a fictional character in in like a computer program, actually b- becoming sentient. The Doctor being clever enough to be sentient is a fantastic idea. The only thing I don't like about that is the fact that all these people are committing suicide. 
And I was like, well, it's using suicide again, and I don't like that. And yeah, also, I don't think perhaps. it makes any sense at all. Yeah, I mean, it is a bit, it is a bit of a, you know, is that the reaction you'd actually have? I don't, I don't know. It's, it's a strange one, that. Yeah, so there's a lot went on in that one. Um, I liked the, the creepy monks. I thought they were good. I was, again, it was a good old, <laughs> nearly, that was a good uh, Doctor Who monster, you know, uh, of, of, the, of the classic type. Uh, I did like but them. But again, people were like, oh, we've got a new monster. It's like, yeah, but I can't see them being used very much again. I think you've kind of had your one. Yeah, one and they were very one. similar to a lot of others as well in some ways. But I do, I did like the way they were portraying, or the way they were the, the effects and the, and the costume and the way it was done. Oh, they were they were a clever idea. Yeah. Go for it, Leah. Sorry, John. I was just going to say, what do they want? I don't know what they wanted. No, same. But um, it reminded me a lot of there's a I think it's a David Tennant episode where everyone wears those Bluetooth headphones. And it reminded me a lot of that, like the once they'd taken over and everyone was like thinking the same and like the statues and stuff. It reminded me of that episode because everyone was still kind of being mind controlled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was an odd one in terms of that, Tim, but I think as as a bigger story, it, it, you know, it had that good epic feel about it. And, it, you know, we had the multi-part episode and there was a lot of good stuff about it. We're, 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 we're running out of time here. Yeah, I, I don't I think the ending the was ending. great. Yeah, yeah. Bill has turned her mum into an imaginary friend, and that's what makes her unique and special and able to save the world. Uh, but then another... that's like how the series ended. It was a lame ending. <laughs> yeah. Because it was like, oh, yeah. the Again... just saved Bill, and now she's fine and just skipping around the universe. Yeah. And it's like, oh, come on. DSX yeah, that, if, if Moffat is guilty of one bad thing... Lazy it's, writing. It, well, it's, <laughs> it's just not knowing how to finish an episode. Getting five minutes to the end of an episode and going... I'm going to do a finish. Oh, it's all fine. <laughs> okay, right. Uh, for time reasons, we're going to have to rush on, I'm afraid. Sorry, chaps. Um, and it was my kind of, sorry, peeps. I uh, don't want you to think I'm, I'm using chaps in a general way. Sorry, Leah. That's all right. I use dude in a general way. It's fine. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, then we had uh, Empress of Mars, which uh, was written by I'm Mark sorry. Gatiss. Which was a, a you know which is usually oh, a sign of good things. He's a great writer. I thought that was a really good one. I thought it was one of the standouts of the the uh, thing. And I and I like the the introduction was quite cool, you know quite a clever one. It's NASA are sending a probe to uh, Mars at some roughly present time, and uh, the Doctor turns up at the back of the <laughs> the, the, the control room or whatever uh, with with these companions and the. Uh, they discover, you know, the, the words "God save the Queen" <laughs> out, uh, marked out in stones or something under the ice cap of Mars. Uh, I was, was going to, I was going to get onto this with the Cybermen, but are there any Doctor Who monsters that we haven't done the origin of now? Because again, this was the origin of the ice, the ice warriors. It's, it's, it's pr everything with known creatures. We're just going back to oh, but you didn't know how they first turned up, did you? Mm, yeah, I suppose and, people. I, I don't think that's necessarily it. always a bad thing, but at the same the angels, time, haven't done that. No, exactly. We'll, we'll we'll get round to it because that seems to be what we do. We're either introducing a new monster or we're going back to how a monster that you know from the past came about, because that all led up to you know meeting up with uh, it's Alpha Centauri yeah. at the end, and yeah, yeah, so that whole thing, and then the Cybermen again. We've got oh, and this is how Cybermen started. We're, we're genesising like crazy. Yeah, but the, the difficult thing with Doctor Who is is that he, he resets the universe more than once. <laughs> so, you know, the, this I, I didn't like the first Cybermen from the new series, from the new uh, style series. Um, again, I'm not overly enthused by the originals, but I was a bit excited about it because it was the originals. Um, but... Um, I thought the new ones were too bulky and stuff, but I think they got better as time went on, as they used them again in other episodes. They sort of slimmed slimmed down the unif uh, the outfit a bit and made it a bit more, a bit less sort of nineteen fifties. I think I suppose is the way to do. Anyway, I'm 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 babbling in a direction there. Uh, time, time, time. Okay, uh, yeah. So they discovered soldiers from Victorian Britain uh, on Mars uh, in eighteen eighty one for some reason. 
which was fine. Which was fine. Well, yeah, it was fine. I just quite liked people going, oh, good golly wee, what do we have here? It's like, I love it when people talk in Old English. <laughs> it was good. It was it was a very good episode. I really did enjoy it. And, and we do have the, uh, the the Ice Warriors, the Ice Queen. It was just it was very well done. Yeah, but we're going to have to move on. Oh, I'm not going to have much time. We're going to try and squeeze in some at the end. So Eaters of Light was the next one. That was the Roman Empire. Uh, Roman army, sorry. Uh, the Ninth Legion of the Roman army, we went missing in Scotland in uh, the second century. Um, they, they sort of have a, a bit of a bet. Bill and the Doctor have different ideas of what will happen to them. Uh, and, you know, we find out in that episode. Again, I think the ending was a bit strange on that one and it was a bit weak. Um, mm. But the, Yeah. The, no, the I, I really like yeah. the idea. I, I like the idea of, like, um, uh, something echoing through like some strange noise that you might hear might be something else oh it wasn't that, that. Quite... yeah it wasn't that, that i didn't like it. it was the it was just the way they did it suddenly they the way that these creatures feed on light and suddenly giving them light gets rid of them or something uh, you know it just seemed a bit middle muddled up at the end yeah they couldn't just quite decide on that yeah but I liked... there was a whole thing where I, well when when bill got the slime on her light would burn it off and yet they got power from light so, but surely light must be harming them if the thing they excrete is burnt off by light. But, yeah, uh, yeah, it's a bit mixed up. But yeah. that, that was the one thing about it. Was a bit muddled. Yeah, a bit muddled up. But the actual, you know, the I, I really did like the opening and and you know the the, the future or present day children hearing the noises and everything. I thought I thought it was really good. That that part of it, I agree with you there, John. It was really it was really goodly. Yeah, right. We're running out of time. We're running out of time. Uh, where we go? Oh yeah, Fun yeah. Bit, world in world enough in time. World enough in time. Um, yeah. Which we've we've touched on a couple of things, namely. The, the huge rant I wanted to have about the, the next times ruining the surprises throughout it. But also, yeah. can we just take a moment to appreciate the fact that they completely wasted having John Sim in those episodes? They could <laughs> like have making him wear a mask. With John Sim. <laughs> and they just like, what was the point of him? He wasn't even there for anything. Was it actually him? <laughs> I, I, I was can, so upset. I, I can tell you what the John point Sim. was. What was the point? I, I, I can tell you what the point was, is the fact that the master and the old... Mm. In the old days, they used to have the master in disguise, and it yeah. was the creepy. I know that they brought back the the like master's goatee. He had a goatee. I was going to say it's the goatee. It was just yeah, Johnson goatee needed. Yeah. I think it was it was nice having him because I I when I watched that episode, I was quite drunk at, at Glastonbury, and I couldn't <laughs> wait until I got home. So I just rocked out from watching the Foo Fighters and I got back to my tent and thought, "Fuck it, I gotta watch it." So I watched it and was completely like. What the fuck was that? That was amazing, but like the the um the thing was is like yes, I didn't see that that was him at all. I just didn't spot that that was John Sim. I knew it was a master, but I didn't realise it was John Sim. John Sim in a wig because I did. Right, no, but I, that, I didn't that was the that thing as well. Is is I say I would have loved that episode if it hadn't have been spoiled for me. Yeah, well, I was going to say I would have used loved to go to so extreme lengths to. To um, protect the fact that the master was in it when he yeah. did come in. I think time time will be good to this. I think I think in time you'll just look back on it and think that was such a good idea. But I think because it was spoiled, you're just going to be like, yeah, ah, it's yeah, that's, much. that's it's, it's a yeah, really good story yeah. of th those two episodes. I, I I enjoy the two episodes. Again, the final ending of the series was a bit, but we'll, we'll get onto that. <laughs> oh, I don't I don't know about that because I would feel like in the last episode. I think that it reminded me a lot of Quantum Leap, and that was what was really clever about it. And also the second Avengers film, where they suddenly all stop, all the action stops, and they're all like thinking, "What's going on here?" And I quite liked that about it because it, it told a different story, you know. Yeah, two mm. different time frames going on. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of good stuff about it. I mean, it's I'd say overall that that two part finisher was really good. Um, certainly. I mean, I'll say one thing actually that, that I do tend to dissect them a bit like we're doing uh, afterwards. But I try to watch the episodes of Doctor Who just the way I would have done when I was a kid. I just try not to think about anything too much and just go with go where they're taking me. And if they do a good job of that, I, I tend to overlook that stuff until afterwards. You know, the sort of oh, that was a bit weak. That we, you know, and, and I think these two episodes do it really well. They do. You know, they give you the sort of fake science in a really good way. 
well, it's not fake, in fact, <laughs> but they're, they're a representation of it. Um, can I can I say one thing which I resisted saying at the beginning of all this as well when we were talking about Bill? Go for it. It's it's a really sad pattern that the two black companions only got one series each. Also that they tried to kill off the only LGBT character that they had, which happens in every damn show. It's so annoying. <laughs> I know, it's a strange thing that they, I've seen that talked about, yeah. And it is, what um, about Mickey? There's Mickey Smith. He's not a companion, uh, and he's well, he's not an official, com- you know, like the companion. Yeah, he's uh, not. John he, he, he's as well. A, well, John Barrowman well, say, d- never yeah, dies, yeah. so there's there's one good one. <laughs> and then you go to Torchwood, and they killed off Yanto, and it's so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. is not a surprise, no. Um, that they, they, they it's, it's such a weird thing. It's like it's almost like that. They killed they, off everyone else. Yeah, they kill a lot of people off in Torchwood. Okay, we're running over time, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to just... I'll apologise if I could stop for just a second. I apologise to my audience who are looking for me for my 9 o'clock show. Um, uh, I will be starting it right after this, so don't go away. Uh, if you're enjoying this, though, you know, obviously stick with us for a few minutes. Uh, we're going to finish this and wrap this up. Okay, uh, and if you're watching on YouTube, you probably don't know what that was about. Don't worry about it. I do another show at the time that I'm doing this one. Does that make any sense? Anybody? Something. Yeah, something. Okay. Um, so if we could wrap up and sort of talk about this as, as quickly as we can, then. Um, so overall how, impressions how are we of the series for, for Christmas. How about the the final final final? Uh, I'll say that's the first Christmas episode I've been excited about f- for a long time. Purely yeah. because of the uh, that's another thing. Obviously, we never mentioned is uh, the first Doctor comes back. Um, but now he's not just built from Harry Potter. Yes, he is. No, he's not. He's, he's, that, he's that bloke from Game of Thrones. I, I, I didn't watch. <laughs> I didn't watch the final episode live. I was away hunting for Nessie. Right. Um, but the only, and managed to avoid any spoilers, which was lovely. But the only thing I did see was just the thing saying about um, the Doctors will be back for the Christmas episode. Mm. Which was kind of nice, because although it was a spoiler, at the same time, I had no idea what it was on about until right at the end. Oh, yeah, <laughs> went, but it, it wasn't uh, a spoiler in the same way that the John Sims thing was. Well, the doctors to pick from, haven't you? So it could be any one of 12 people. For, for all I knew, Missy was going to declare herself a doctor as well. No, so I, <laughs> yeah, I, I had various theories running through my head. No, but um, like I said, because oh, they and, used and the... That's something we haven't touched on. <laughs> on you go. Missy. Yeah, can we come I'm back to that in a second? Can... Let's just finish this very quickly and then we'll move on to me because I want to bring her up as well. Um, mm. Just what I was going to say about the Doctor's thing is that um, they, they did that, though, in the episode, so it wasn't as much a spoiler as a cliffhanger, which I thought was I thought was a reasonable way to do it, so it wasn't so bad. Yeah, sorry, Missy. Yeah, um, let's talk about Missy for the last few minutes before, before we go. Um, yeah, sorry. Chris, if Chris isn't here, Aaron, you, you go on and say what you were going to say uh, first of all. Well, I wasn't going to say much, much really, apart from uh, it was a kind of disappointing goodbye to her. Um, the, well, do we think it's a goodbye? Because again, it, it's almost like trying to wrap them up. But as with any superhero or, or you know, super villain, never say never. He survived. She could. Yeah. Uh, but I thought it was a. Uh, I've, Personally, I thought it was a perfect ending to... I mean, what would the Master do to anyone is stab them in the back? Yeah. So he would just stab himself in the back. And I thought, well, that's genius, really. I that part that was, was very clever. Idea. You're right there. Yep, that is right. I suppose you do have a get-out in as much as he shot her in the back in her past. And she remembered enough to remember about the um, the device to... Um, you know the the dematerialization device. Oh yeah, the the, yeah. Bill, the Bill and Ted. But... So, <laughs> also, what did she hand the Doctor? I, I don't know. Can't remember. I've only just thought of that we... actually. Just mm, just while back. talking about her, then she there's a whole thing where she walks away from him. She looks at him and she gives him a handshake in a way that's very obviously passing him something. Which we were all like, oh well, he'll have given her, she'll have given him the dematerialization device that the master needs, ha 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 ha, and it's never referred to. Hmm, maybe it'll come up again. Yeah. That's Moffat's lazy writing, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, possibly. Yeah, just a thread oh, that he never. Or it'll up. turn you... up in the um, in the Christmas episode. Yeah, maybe. Let's you hold. Could be right. 
what, one last thing I'd like to say though is that did you spot the uh, the Masters TARDIS? No. Because if you look, I've got a freeze frame of it. I'll, I'll email it to you, <laughs> uh, uh, you guys. But it's like a, a grey container on wheels. Right. Okay. Oh, what you down see... in 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 the um the previous episode is it? Uh, yeah, on the the, yeah. the episode in the hospital. Last. Um, no, it's when there's a scene about four, 15 minutes before the end, and uh, Missy's looking at a computer terminal, and he comes out of this box. Uh... Oh, we'll have to watch that so, again to catch that. Right, overall well, then... email you the picture. Yep, no worries. Uh, overall, that doesn't help us in the show, though. <laughs> overall, <laughs> I think everybody was pretty happy with Capaldi. I don't think there was any problem there. Um, no. I loved... Bill Potts. I, I thought that. Um... Same. I miss her. Yeah, I, I mean it's already and, and a bit of a thing. We, we had a brief discussion about the first episode, in a kind of test for this. Yeah. And I said I I thought I was going to hate her. I thought I was going to absolutely the 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 initial trailers for this season, where yeah. you had her going. Why do they keep saying exterminate? Oh, wouldn't die be quicker? And I'm just like, ah, oh, don't. Don't Smart be one of those episodes. Don't, uh, don't be, be one of those uh, companions. Yeah. No, I think Pearl Mackey is going to go on to big things. I think Pearl Mackey is, is really good. Mm. Uh, yeah, she was brilliant. And and I thought Very the character good. was absolutely fantastic. I've got to fantastic. say as well, though, that line I talked about earlier where she went, oh, you know, I'm only into girls and people my age. Mm. That fell flat. I, I was like, well, I think I can see what you're trying to do with that joke, but it really fell flat. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I the suppose it's kind of like, ha, 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 ha. I'm not going to give in to the whole I'm falling in love with you thing. Yeah, that was it's a bit just, of the, that was a, yeah, some, something well. of the new Doctor Who series, which uh, has, has annoyed a lot of people. Um, and it's kind of, and it's kind of taken away. I think that's one thing they did right with him is they made him an alien again. You mm-hmm. know, um, it'll be interesting to see. Right, we're going to have to do our conjecture about the future of Doctor Who in the next episode because uh, really uh, we're really running over time here, and I've got another show to do, another live show, and. <laughs> Uh, very very quickly I'm just going to say thank you to everybody sorry we ran out of time uh, thank you to Leah thank you Leah thank you for having me thanks Aaron cheers and thank you to John thanks everyone uh, and I've been here Mr Polar Bear <laughs>